here we've now got a pretty savage rolling reese line. Easy troop. In today's video, we're going to have a look at Hive 2. Is it? came to my attention recently that a lot of you were surprised to find out I use Hive 2 for a lot of my bass sounds and my pad sounds and my ARP sounds. It generally is a pretty underrated synth that I think deserves a little bit more love. So we're going to break down why I use it, what I love about it and why maybe it's worth you checking out as well. So all this started from playing a little bit of this track where someone noticed that the synths in it are primarily Hive especially the bass line and pads that drop in in this section here. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. That is primarily the case. It's even still labeled here as initialize. That is the most simple wobbly Reese in this case. And I like to make a lot of my sounds using Hive 2 for a very simple reason. As complex as it looks, it's actually a really easy, quick, simple synth to navigate that allows you to do, well, incredibly complex things, much more so than the likes of Serum. Serum has the ability to dive into and dial in very quickly because of the simplicity. Hive 2 looks a lot more complex, but once you learn to navigate it, you can do a lot of those things and take them a little bit further as well. Let's break down the GUI and I'll reset this patch here and we'll look to maybe build a little something as we go along. So to reset Hive I can go up here where it says it is registered and in my case scroll all the way to the bottom and go and that will just give us a base saw wave. Across the top here, we've got our classic global controls, our preset hunting, undo, you know, the overall output, transpose it up or down, voice amount, legato, pretty standard. Here, where we've got OS1 and sub1 is just mirrored on the other side. And then below is filter1 and filter2. And that's the way that we organize a sound in Hive using those filters. So OS1, for example, is switched on here in filter1, but not switched on here in filter filter 2, but OS1 goes into filter 1 and comes out. If we want to hear oscillator 2, we can also send that to filter 1. The sub oscillators are in simpler versions. So we've got sub one and sub two. As we can see, sub one is currently set to sawtooth. And if we were to turn sub one on in here, we've got yet another sawtooth. Whereas sub two is set to pulse. And now everything is going through filter one. We have the ability to then send individual parts into say filter two. So I could send just sub two over to filter two. It'll be processed separately. This means I could do something like change the filter two pass type to a high pass, for example. In terms of what you can do with each oscillator, well, we've got all the standards in here, sine, triangle, etc., that you'd find in a classic subtractive as well as pink noise. But then just here it says wavetable. And when we select wavetable, you can see here in the hive, the hexagon here in the middle, that wavetable one is now active. And if we click on wavetable, well, here we have opened up a whole new can. For you see, We have a huge variety of wavetables and these are absolutely enormous. However, it doesn't even stop there. You can, in fact, add our own wavetables in here as well, making completely custom ones. So I was to click here and go show in Finder, it will show us the folder where we've then got our wavetables. Let's go new folder and we'll call this custom and I've got a couple of audio files on the desktop and we'll use those as examples for our 
custom wavetables. Bring those in like that and we can close this away. Now when we refresh the wavetable list, we have our custom and there are my wavetables, which were just sounds that I had preloaded. Let's take the like a full Reese and we can now use that as a wavetable. Let's give it a unison. A bit of detune, maybe a unison of seven. We can now completely freely modulate this as well using the amplitude, the mod, or the LFO. And it's just a case of drag and drop. Let's use the modulator here to modulate the position of the wavetable. Once we've done that connection, we can see when it's selected, we've got an orange pip showing us what's connected together. And it brings the matrix up at the bottom and we can push that amount in and you'll see the adjustment happen on the control as well. So now, So let's make it so we've got a slow attack. And bring that amount down. Let's even slow that attack off even more. Can change it so it we can change it so it's one shot loops goes back and forth incredibly slow tempos or just have it off so we've got very individualized manual control because it's bipolar we can choose the direction to pull it in Even though we've just set that up though, we can just freely bounce through to other sounds. Here we're going through different parts of a drum break. change the crossfade type as well. Let's go to something like zero phase between the different slices. It changes the whole evolution of the sound. Let's take this and bring it down an octave. So we're definitely in some sound design territory right now. So as you can see, the oscillators are incredibly deep. They go a step further though, because they all run through this synth engine here, which has three versions, clean, normal, and dirty. And it completely changes how the sound overall is generated. Clean is gonna be more like your serum, very un-anti-aliasing, very, very pure, a little higher on processing. Whereas normal, it's a little dirtier little quicker and more effective and dirty. Well, it has a real analog kind of quality to it rather than thinking it's downgraded. I hope the differences there translate. For this, I kind of like dirty. All right, so let's have it. So the filter now evolves that sound over time for us. Well, let's take our low pass. We could leave it on the low 24, maybe give it a little resonance boost for which we get a representation here of what's going on. And we could link that to mod two by just dragging mod two onto the cutoff. We can bring the cutoff down. We can bring the cutoff down, but then have it so it's opened up.
but perhaps we always want there to be an underlying subsonic sound to this. So we could take sub one, we could switch it over to sine, and we could send that to filter two. So now we've always got that weighty sub right underneath it. There it is. With our evolving sound right on top of it. And then we've got a good old effects chain as well, which is completely reorderable, much like you'd find in lots of other options. That means we can decimate sounds pretty well. Go back to wavetable one and maybe we can move the speed of this up a little bit by adjusting mod one. else we could look to do is send filter one into filter two. I mean they could then modulate using one of the LFOs filter two. So let's make LFO one a one over four. savage rolling reese line something you probably never expected you'd be able to get out of hive but that guys is why i'm using hive 2 so much and that's basically the process that i would go through to build and create my own kind of sound and sound design often bounce it out to audio and then chop those bits up as well as you'll find in tracks like oh, no.